21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? See, you don't need to just know who the devil and his demons are, but you need to be educated on how they operate. Right. Right. Amen? Amen? So what I'm going to do this morning is probably more teaching than it is preaching because you can't preach spiritual warfare. You almost just have to teach it. Amen? So, But it's always blowed my mind that it seems like Brian, that the world knows more about how the Come spirit on. realm operates than the church does. Right. Right. Amen? Come on. I, I, I didn't hear this stuff growing yeah. up. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear it growing up. <laughs> it, but it, but, but it also, I also know this, that there are, it is much more magnified now. There are much more things going on in the spiritual realm now than there was 20 years ago. But, I, but I, I want to I just give you an example of what I'm talking about today, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you some stuff that probably you ain't going to hear nowhere else. There's a new show on the FX channel. And all of you probably, if you've got cable or satellite or what it is you get, it's, 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 it's called FX. Okay? And it's a new show that just started this past week, and the show is called Little Demon. Okay? It's a cartoon. Now look, you all know that any kind of cartoon, whether it says TVMA or not, you all know it's aimed at kids. Yeah, that's right. Come on. That's right. Now, it, it, it's no surprise that this show called Little Demon is produced by Disney. Right. Okay? No. That's not a surprise. And, and, if, and if the fact of what Disney is coming out with surprises you, you need to do just a little bit more research on Disney because Disney has a demonic agenda, folks. I said right. Disney has a demonic agenda. It's no longer Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck anymore. Right. Come, on. Come on. And the plot of this show, and I've taken this straight from their website, Straight from their website. Thirteen years after being impregnated by Satan, a reluctant mother, Laura, and her antichrist daughter, Chrissy, attempt to live an ordinary life in Delaware, but are constantly thwarted by monstrous forces, including Satan, who yearns for custody of his daughter's soul. That's what you look up the information on the show says. Okay? Now, I've watched a couple of clips from the show, and I will tell you this. I do not recommend doing it, especially in front of children. Right. The show has actual satanic rituals. Yes. Come on. It's a cartoon that's on regular TV, and it's a free channel, and it has full frontal nudity. Mm. Let me add that. <laughs> Uh, look here. Satan was not depicted in this cartoon as a red creature with pitchfork right. and, and, and scales. That's right. But he was depicted as a good looking man. Right. Of course we know the Bible describes him as an angel of light. Right. But in the clip that I watched, Satan pulls back the veil to show his daughter who is claimed to be the Antichrist. A spiritual realm, and he shows her this unseen world and how it operates in an attempt to pull her over to his side. Come on, yeah. Let me tell you something, folks. This is what the world is putting out there. This is what the world is seeing. But I don't understand why the church can't see what's going on in the spiritual realm like the world is seeing. They're way ahead of spiritual warfare than we are. They're way ahead of us on that. And we better catch up quick. I said we better catch up quick. You don't have to amen this morning. Here's the message. 
We're right where we are right now is in the house of God. We're in church. But there are unseen forces even right now that are trying to get you distracted from what God has you in this service right here, right now. Yes, they is. Yes, they is. But I want you to know that there is a mighty move of God that can happen every time the door is open and every time we have service and He is still performing miracles. He is still delivering people. He is still saving people. And we don't see it happening enough. Church, we have not even scratched the surface of what God is able to do in this place. We have not even scratched the surface of God's power that He can show us in this place. But I want you to know that there is something that can hinder or even stop the move of God. I, yes, I did. I said stop them. Look, wow. you said, well, nothing can stop God. Yeah, you can. That's right. right. That's right. right. You can. You can stop God from doing what he wants to do yes. in your life. It, it, it's all up to you. That's right. You can stop it. Yeah. So let me tell you what happens. <laughs> the thing that can hinder the move of God or stop the move of God in a service it's when devils come to church. Come on. Yeah. yeah. That's the title of the message today. I want to make a statement and I want you to listen very closely. If you don't hear anything else today, I want you to hear this. Our battles are not in here. Right. 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 They're out there. Right. That's right. We're supposed to fight out there. Yeah. We come in here to get charged up. Right. We come in here. We're supposed to come in here to get a blessing. We're supposed to come in here to be a blessing. We're supposed to come in here to bless God. We're supposed to come here to get spiritual strength. But see, if you come in here, and as soon as you come in those doors, you're having to fight battles every time you come into the house of God, you're never going to have enough strength to fight when you get out there. Come on. There is no reason whatsoever that we should have to fight through some of the things we have to fight through to have a move of God. Right. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that it doesn't take bad people coming through the door to divide or hinder a church service. Right. 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 Come, on. Yeah. Come on. All it takes is people who have allowed things of the flesh to come in their lives and allow those things to manifest through them when they come to church. That's all it takes. Yeah, right. It's all it takes. Good people. Good people. I, I, want, I want to tell you right now, there have been times that I have come to church and I hindered the move of God. And if you be honest with me, you can tell me that you have done the same thing every single one of us. There's been times that I've come to church that I didn't feel like coming. There's been times when I came that, Brother Todd, I saw something that aggravated me. And I absolutely hindered the move of God because I let it bother me. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to get real with you today, church. I'm a firm believer that people do not get what they need out of a service for three reasons. The first two I'm going to go through quickly. The third one I'm going to preach about for a little bit. But the first one is resistance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Not yielding yeah. when the Spirit moves. Right. Yeah. Listen to me closely. I want to tell you that nothing breaks my heart more yes. than watching the Spirit move on somebody. Yeah. And you can see them resisting it and not step out. Wow. There is nothing that breaks a pastor's heart more than to look over a congregation and the Lord is moving on somebody and you can just tell they're just not going to step out. Amen. They're just going to resist it every single way. That, do you know what happens when that happens? That means the enemy came to church. Right. Come on. Amen. Come on. Right. Come on. There's people here every Sunday that I see God wanting to bless and God wanting to give you a deeper experience yes. and a closer walk and bring you to a new level. And, and, and But for some reason, you're just not moving. But I want you to know 
that I, you know, you may not like this, but I want you to know that I'm praying that God does whatever it takes to make you move. Yeah, amen. Yes. You say, Pastor, don't pray that on me. Let me tell you something. I don't. It, it, it don't bother me what you got to go through through the week. It bothers me where you're going to go when you die. Come on. That's uh, right. yeah. If you got to fight just a little bit of hell to get closer, then I'm going to pray that you got to fight just a little bit of hell to get closer. I'm concerned whether or not you go to heaven or you don't. That's it. So it's better for you to go ahead and move yes. than to have somebody yes. praying on you whatever yes. it takes for you to move. Yes. It's better that you just be yes. obedient and not have to worry about what you have to go through that God may put you through to get you where he needs you. Yes. Right. Because if he needs to put you through something to get you where he needs you, I want you to know he will do it. Yes. But I love you. And I want you to receive every single thing that God has for you. Yes. But the number two reason that people don't get what they need out of service is because the person conducting the service is not sensitive to the Spirit. Yeah. Now this goes back on me. Okay? This goes back on me. See, church services are all about timing. And conducted a service. I will tell you right now. I've told Crystal this and she'll tell you this right now. I would rather preach to a thousand people than conduct service to a hundred. I don't like conducting service. But I'm a pastor. It's what got to be done. Right. Got to conduct a service. But let me tell you. I pray just as much on how to conduct the service as I pray on the message. Right, right. Okay? Because it, it's more difficult than preaching. You see the timing has to be just right. Because when the spirit moves and somebody steps into it, Brian, at just the right time and the person conducting is sensitive to what God is wanting to do in that moment, that's when services will break loose yes. and that's when God will manifest himself in mighty ways. And I will tell you right now, there is a key to every single service. There is a key to every single service. And if you are the one that has that key to the service and you don't move, then you're going to mess up the whole timing in that service. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> so when you feel like you need to move out, I don't care what's going on. I don't care if somebody's singing a song. I don't care if it's in the middle of somebody's testimony. I don't care if it's in the middle of preaching. If you feel like you need to come up here and get something from God, don't you stay back there in that seat. You come up here and you get something from God. I'm not going to tell you to stay there till the perfect time. The perfect time for you to come to the altar is any time. Any time. Anytime. Here we go. Number three. Number three reason that people don't get what they need out of church is because spirits that are not of God are being brought in and allowed to operate. Now, I know there's some of you thinking it right now. And that may be some of you even just a little bit upset right now. But you know what? If you are, then that then that means you are letting the devil operate in you right now. Because you ought not be upset with the word of God coming Amen. forth. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Raise your feet and go on. Come on. See, let me tell you something, folks. You can't bring a bad attitude. You can't bring anger and resentment, bitterness, jealousy into the house of God, Todd, and expect a great move of God. It won't happen. That's right. That's true. It won't happen. You know what you're going to get when you bring all that stuff in? You're just going to get a normal church service. Let's go and leave at 12 o'clock and let's go home. Right. 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 But if that's what y'all want, then... I'm sorry, you probably got the wrong preacher because that ain't what I want. I don't want a normal church service, God. I don't want just a normal move of God that that, that we have to, at 12 o'clock, we shut it down and everybody's got to go home whether somebody's got what they need. That ain't, that ain't what I want. I need, I, need a, I need a people that will say, God, we're willing, we're willing to see what you got for us. We want to see what you got. 
something that people think about, but it is a major factor that will absolutely make a difference in a church. Yes. The scripture we read or we read earlier is an example of an extreme case, okay? That's an example of an extreme case. Jesus is in the synagogue during church and the demon starts manifesting because Jesus is there and they know that it's Jesus and they're like, okay, we can't stay around Jesus. I just wonder how many devils could stay around us if we really had some. Come on, man. Uh, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. That's for another message. Right. But they recognized, the devil recognized that it couldn't stand the presence of Jesus. Yes. So it has to start crying out. Listen, whatever you got, whatever you got in your spirit is going to be manifest. If you're an angry person, you're going to come across angry. Right, right. Right. Come on. You got jealousy in your heart, that stuff's going to come out, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't want to preach about the extreme cases. cases. Y'all y'all heard me preach about casting out devils. Y'all know we believe in casting out devils. And if there's a devil that shows itself, I'll guarantee you I'll stay till I'll stay till whenever I got to stay to get that person delivered. Right. Okay? But I'm not talking about the extreme cases of possession right now. I'm talking about what the devil is doing to oppress the church. Right. That's what I want to focus on yeah. because that's where we're living most yes. of the time. Is the oppression, Jerry, mm -hmm. that that the devil has got on the church right. that hinders them yes. from getting what they need from God? Because you only listen. We only got one or two shots at this a week. Come on, right. that's right. Come on, right. amen. That's it. So, if God has taken us to a new level, but I see, I I, I want to talk to you about the little things. The little things that nobody thinks about, but they make a big difference. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. See, God has taken us to a new level, and we know what to do when we come in here. We know that if we come in here and we give God glory, that God will show up. We know that when we come in here, if we start to praise God and we let the Spirit move, that great things will begin to happen. But there are little things that we can let go of that that can propel us to even a higher level than where we are right now. Here's what I'm talking about. The enemy is always looking for a way in. And whether we realize it or not, there, there are demonic forces that can attach themselves to us and cause us to have attitudes that we should not have. Okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're married... Okay, if you're married and you're on your way to church and all of a sudden mm -hmm. <coughs> you and your honey get into it right. yep. and y'all fuss all the way down the mountain. Come on. The truth, Don't sit there and look at me like it ain't ever happened to Come on. Because <laughs> it's ahead. happened to us. Right. Go ahead. Right. You're married. You live with that person. You're with that person all the time. Look, I know you love them, but every now and then they're going to aggravate you. Right. Right? right. right? And it just might be that one aggravates the other on the way to church. Right. Okay? Yeah. Now, look, let me get, don't bring that mess in here. That's right. I ain't finna deal with that stuff. Right. Get that. Get that when you get in the parking lot and you pull up at church and you're still arguing with your sweetheart. One of y'all got to have enough backbone to say, look here, we're about to go to church. Let's get this right. Right. You want to take that up with them later on, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Y'all go ahead and take it on up there. But don't be taking it up with each other on Sunday when you're about to come in here and do something for the Lord. I don't need to deal with it. Y'all 
fussing, I squeeze it a little bit. <laughs> Amen. I said, now honey, we're on our way to church. Guess what? She does the same thing. Now Mickey, hush that stuff. Am I right? Mickey, hush that stuff. You're going to preach. So every now and then, Jerry, it's, it's, it's like a child. Every now and then, see, you need somebody to hold you accountable. Yes, we do. See, we need people that will hold us accountable. So every now and then, it's kind of like one of these deals uh, where, where Daddy used to come behind me and go, and slap me upside the head. See, every now and then, you need somebody in your life that will slap you upside the head spiritually and say, what are you doing, Dumbo? You're about to go to church. But you can't bring all your humanity and your flesh into those doors Amen, every right. Sunday yes. when you've only got about a couple of hours to get what you need from God right. to last you for a while. Amen. You've got to leave that mess outside. Yeah. And you know what I found out? We've been we've been fussing down the mountain before and, and coming here and we, and we took care of it. We're out in the parking lot, come in here and have a good service, get back out in the car. We don't fuss no more. We done forgot what it was we was fussing about anyway. God done took care of it. I'll tell you right now, you get out there and you take care of it. You come in here and you have a good service, I'll guarantee you. All the way back home, you won't never talk about nothing about that good service that you had. You'll forget what you were arguing about. You'll forget about what the kids done to you. And you'll think about Amen. Amen. So do what you need to make it right with each other. Amen. Look, if, if a service is not going the way that you think it should, okay? Oh, we ain't done yet. Somebody said something or done something that you think they shouldn't have said or done. And you're sitting beside somebody. And you look at them. Or you start punching them. Yeah. I've seen people nudge each other in church when they didn't think something was right. Yeah. And they'll say something. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Do you see what she did? Yeah. You know what you did? Not only are you are, are you hindered, but you hindered that person beside That's you. Right. And now they can't get what they need because they're thinking about what you said about the person who's doing that. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's a devil that just got in church. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. So here's what I want to tell you, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. Keep your mouth to yourself if you see something ain't going right. Yeah, if the right. Holy Ghost knows it ain't going right, the Holy Ghost will take care of it. Don't you worry about it. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Right. That's about three days. But let me show you something. You, I've seen people cause other people to miss out. Yeah. To miss out. Do you want to be the one to cause somebody not to come to an altar and get what they need? Yeah. Do you really? Because I will tell you this. God will require that of you. That's right. So here. I've witnessed, here we go, I've witnessed singers, I've witnessed ministers who will attend service because, who, who, who will attend the service and because they didn't get called on. Yeah. <laughs> because they didn't get called on to do anything in that service, yeah. they just, they're a singer, they're a minister, and because they didn't get called on to do something, they'll let a spirit of anger or jealousy come in and creep in for just a little while and they, and they end up not getting nothing out of that service. Right. Well, he didn't call on me and he should have. Look, if you're a minister, if you're a member of this church and you've got something to say or something to do, how many times have I ever told y'all to sit down if you had something to say? Come on. Come on. Right. Tell me one time. Come on. None. If you got something to say or do, get up and do it. Right. Right. I'm okay. 
Unless you start getting up and tell them, getting the devil, giving the devil praise, and then uh -huh. I may ask you to sit down, or I may tell Crystal to play the piano so loud nobody can hear you. Because <laughs> that ain't what we're here for. Right. We're here to give him some praise. We ain't here to say what the devil done right. all week. Right. Come on. So listen. Jealousy among the ministry, and that's singers, musicians, and, and preachers. Jealousy among the ministry will kill a service quicker than anything. That's right, amen. It'll kill a service quicker than anything. And whether you're a singer or a preacher, it doesn't matter. If you're one of those people who can worship as long as you're doing something, come on. But you can't worship when somebody else is doing something. You get excited when you're doing something, but when they're doing something, you can't get excited. You got a problem. You need to get under the blood. Amen. 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 See, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was from my mother. In all my years of preaching, she said, you know what, Mickey? She said, if you want people to praise the Lord while you're preaching, she said, then when somebody else is preaching or when somebody else is singing, you be the best worshiper there is in the congregation. Amen. And you watch what happens. Amen. You watch what happens. There's no room for jealousy among God's people. Amen. I said there's no room for jealousy among God's people. We had a visiting preacher here Tuesday night. If you include the people that watched on YouTube as well as Facebook, our Tuesday night service has been viewed over 3,000 times this week. Oh, wow. Little church in Sherwood, we've been viewed over 3,000 times since Tuesday night our service has. Just a Tuesday night service. Okay. I wasn't the one preaching. Brian, I may get 300. Jeremy Ivey got 3,000. And you know what? I'm not care I don't care one bit because I am jealous of brother Jeremy Ivey. No. You hear me? If I'm jealous of him, I wouldn't ask him to come in the first place. I'm not jealous of that man or any other man or woman of God. If they're preaching, they set the word of the Lord. should have on your mind when you come to the house of God is praising God and yes. praising Jesus. Amen. The spirit of distraction yeah. is another thing that's often brought in. Right. You hear me? Yes. The spirit of distraction. I, I've seen people not get what they need because something happened in a service and they got distracted by it. Right. Come on. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Yes. Don't worry. You, that you, you, you can't fix their problem and they can't fix yours. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. Amen. Too many people are worried about what they've got to do after service. They're worried about what they did yesterday or they're worried about what they did tomorrow, what they're going to do tomorrow. And they can't get focused on God yes. because they got too much stuff in their life that's just distracting. Yes. But if you get focused on God while you're in his house for just a little while, you may just end up getting something that changes your life. Yeah. Amen. You may just end up getting something that changes your life. Thank you, Lord. Here's the one thing here's the one thing that I see that's brought in the house of God more than any other thing. It's the it's number one in my opinion. It's the number one thing that hinders the service. And it's the spirit of heaviness. It's a spirit of heaviness. You're fine until church starts. And then guess what? Oh, I'm tired. You know what that is, folks? That's a devil. That's a devil. You might as well just say it for what it is. You're fine if you got in the parking lot and you come in church and then, no. Yeah. You don't even want to stand up. Yeah. You don't even want to clap your hands. Yeah. You don't want, well, I don't know that's if that's awesome. ever happened to you, but I tell you right now, it sure has happened to me. Come on. Yeah. And then the first time somebody says, how you doing? You know what you say? I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. Now you done spoke it. Yeah. That's right. 
Right. Now he done spoke it. So the spirit of heaviness can absolutely bind a service. Yes. That's why did why did you think I tell you to stand up? Why do I tell you think I make you clap your hands? I don't make you do it. Why do you why do you think I say clap your hands? Yeah. Move around a little bit. Because the more you sit, the tireder you get. Yeah, right. And the enemy will play on that. Look, I'm not going to lie. I've, I've slept during this preaching before. The Sunday school lesson. Nod off. But look here. Do you know what that is? It's a spirit of heaviness. It's a spirit of heaviness. Because it's the enemy not wanting you to get what you need right. to get out of right. service. Yeah. Come on. So you've got to sit there and pray. You've got to break through this. Yeah. Well, I ain't done. Uh -uh. I'm not tired. Come on. You got, you, yes, but God. see, you leave the house of God, you go do everything all yeah, Sunday. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, somebody yeah. better say amen. Yeah. You don't need power. closed, he won. Yeah, that's right. I said, if the enemy can keep your mouth closed, listen, if the enemy can keep you from praising God when you come in that's here, right. he won. That's right. He won. Just go outside when you get done and say, I didn't praise the Lord, the devil beat me today. Yeah. Say that a few times and see how good it makes you feel. Come on. Come on. Say it when you leave. If you didn't do nothing today, go outside and you tell somebody, say, you know what? The devil beat me today. Say that a few times and I'll guarantee you'll get aggravated enough that the next time you come in here, you'll say the devil ain't going to beat me today. I'll just tell you right now. The devil ain't going to beat me today. I'm better than that. I've got something greater to send me than he does in the world. Somebody ought to help me preach this morning. Yeah. The enemy knows that if you press through the tiredness, he will be defeated. Right. Yes. What are you saying? This is what I'm telling you. Pray before you get here. Yes. My yes. granny always says, look, I worship before I got here. I don't need no preacher to help Come me get on. into worship. Yeah. Come on. I don't need ten songs to help me get into worship. I was into worship when I got out in the parking lot. I worship down the mountain. I don't need somebody to prime me. I'm going to tell you right now. before you never started. And that's the way a lot of church people are. They got to get primed before they never get started. Right. Come on. Yeah. Uh -uh. Prime when you get home, folks. Amen. Prime at the house. Amen. Then get started when you come in here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Here's what you got to do. You got to rebuke the enemy before you walk in the door. Amen. You got to resist and rebuke the enemy before you walk in the door. I got a message on rebuking the enemy. I ain't preached it, but I will. You've got to say, if there's anything today that's on me that's unlike God, yes, I command you to leave in Jesus' name. Yes. And you start doing that before you get here. You start getting yourself cleaned up before you get here. You start rebuking those spirits before you get here. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, you watch what happens when you do it. Look, y'all already know that I believe in casting out devils. But I also believe that we've got to get rid of those devils that are constantly oppressing us yes. to the point to where we can't even have church the right way when we come in here. Amen. Right. Come on. You hear me? Amen. Is there anybody that's just tired of letting the devil win? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Isn't it about time that you stand up and stood your ground and say enough is enough? Enough yeah. is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Yes. He's tricking too many people of God. Yes.